Hello beautiful people, it's your girl Jeannie and it's Jeannie Signatures again. Today we are going to be making this beautiful simple airline skirt. So, and I'm going to be making use of uh, two fabrics for the front, the striped one and a plain one. So, but I'm going to be cutting the back first. So, I'm going to keep the front pieces aside so that I'll come back to it later. So I have my tape roll, my scissors, my tailor's chalk, and then my pattern master. Someone actually requested for this video, not knowing that I made something like that, but I've not been able to post it, so it was just right in time. Yeah. So it's quite easy, and I'm trying to adjust my camera here. So Okay. So now I'm just going to delve into it. It's very beginner friendly, as I promised that I'll be dishing out some beginner friendly videos before we move over to the advanced ones so yeah so i've already ruled out my zipper allowance i used one inch for my zipper allowance so i ruled it all the way down so the next thing i'm going to be taking now is my shoulder measurement and our shoulder measurement is always divided by two so whatever your shoulder is, you divide it by two and then you mark. Please note that you have to mark it from the line of the zipper allowance, not at the folded part. You know, you marked one inch, so you place your tape on that line and then you mark whatever your shoulder measurement is. And because this style is going to be having a sleeve, I'm going to be having a half inch for seam allowance for the sleeves. And then I'm coming down for my armhole by eight inches. And that will automatically become my chest line. So now I'm connecting my arm all line together. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is to be coming down from my shoulder slope by one inch. And then I'm going to go and get my neck width. Remember to place that tape on that zipper allowance so i'm marking three inches for my mark width neck width sorry and then for the back depth i'm going to be coming down by two inches this is optional if you like you can go more down more than that and so i'm going to be connecting all those things now i'm going to be connecting my shoulder slope first and then i'll connect my neckline I didn't know the chalk was not visible. Sorry about that. Even though I'm using a blue chalk because this glue is plain. So now I'm going right to get my half length or half cut. And then I'm going to be marking it. For this tutorial, the half cut is 17 inches. That is what I'm marking right there. And then I'm just going to be doing a waist to hip. But if you if you have your client's measurement of a shoulder to hip, you can go for that. But I'm making use of the waist to hip, and I marked eight inches for that. It's almost the same thing, yeah. So those are places I'm going to be marking the appropriate measurements. So for now, I'm going to be marking my bust divided by four, and then I'm adding two inches. And then I'm going to the waist, and I'm marking my waist divided by 4, and then you had 2 inches sewing allowance. You see, I made a mistake on my bust measurement. I forgot that I'd already marked, because I'm used to cutting the front pieces first. So that's why I'm telling you to be very careful. So I had to go back to readjust that. Please always take note of that, yeah. So I'm going to my hip measurement now, and then I'm marking my hip divided by 4, and then I'll add 2 inches extra sewing allowance. So like I told you, I'm from the thumbnail, you can see that the A shape is not that very obvious, it's just a little A shape, but it came out beautiful. So that is why, that is what I'm going to be doing now. You just connect your lines, your bust to your waist, your waist to your hip, and then to the hemline. I 
and from the hip you connect to the edge of the cloth like so so we are going we are done with the back piece so we are going to cut it out okay sorry before that i need to get the midpoint of the armhole yeah so that i'll cover up my armhole and then go in by 0.75 or half an inch and then i'm going to connect like that and then we are through that is for the front i was doing that for the front i forgot that i was doing the back you know when you are used to something you just like you're stereotyped to do that so uh ignore that for the back because it's meant for the front so i'm cutting it out Please, if you have watched up to this stage, kindly subscribe, like, and please share. And please always leave a comment to encourage me. Thank you. If you have any questions, please kindly feel free to ask, and I'll be in the comment section to answer all. Thank you. So this is our back piece. I'm going to be notching the zipper allowance and then I'm going to be slitting it into two because it has to be in two pieces. set that aside for now and so i'm going over to the front piece so i got half a yard of material crepe material for this i'll be making use of this I'm trying to get the front and the back because you need to look very well before you get that so i've gotten the okay so that's what i'm laying on the table cutting table so i'm going to be laying this as well so for some people or to make it easier for some people you can just go to the sewing machine to your sewing machine and then you can just run half an inch at that edge where you are holding the two pieces together so that uh, when you start inputting your measurements it will be easy for you but like i did yeah i didn't want to go then come back now i just want to do everything once so i left it like that i'm just going to be using pins to hold it down then after getting all the measurements, I'll take it to the sewing machine and then I'll do everything once and for all instead of going and then coming back. So if you feel you can, don't want that kind of stress, you can just join it together first before cutting it. It still comes out the same way. So the only thing I'm going to be doing now, right about now, is just to measure half an inch from the beginning to the end of the fabric. Hold the uh, use pins to hold it in place so that it won't shift, and then I'll trace out with my back pieces, and that is it. The only difference is the neck depth. That is the only alteration I'm going to be making for the front piece. So I want to get my pins.
please if there's any tutorial you want me to make for you you can request for it and i'll be happy to oblige So now I'm going to be marking half an inch all the way down. I'm eyeballing it because I know what half an inch is. If you don't know what half an inch or how to get it like that, please just use your tape to measure it so that everything will be even. But I know what half an inch is, so that is why I don't want to waste time. So I'm eyeballing it and using my hand to just draw a straight line down so now the next thing to do is just to place the back piece on the front piece like that Just make sure that while placing it, you place on the line of the half inch. Because if you place it after it, that means you, you will not have any joining allowance for the front pieces. And it will affect all your measurements. So you need to put that in mind. Just take your time to arrange it very well. This glue can shake perfectly. So I'm trying to notch the neck width so that I will know where to cut the neck depth from because the neck width has to be the same. So now I'm cutting it out. This style is very easy and very beginner friendly. Please just stay tuned. We're almost true. So I'm going to be removing that so that I'll be able to get the neck depth. Okay, now I have to do the front and hole. Remember that, that I was doing at the back that I forgot totally? This is what I'm doing now. Just coming by 0.75 or half an inch and then you connect and that will be your front arm hole. So you adjust your front arm all. Yeah. So for the neck depth, I'm going to be coming down by six inches. And then it's going to be a round neckline, so I'm connecting like so.
and that is it see how easy it is it's very very easy so i'm going to get over to my sewing machine now i'm going to be joining that middle part and then i'm going to be using a bias to turn the necklines yeah that's the first thing i'm going to be doing sew that half an inch down when you sew it, this is how it looks. It's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's very beautiful. The color combination, it's beautiful. And this striped material for thing, I think, is because it's coming out in vogue more now. Yeah, I've seen people wear it. So when my client brought hers, I said, okay, I'm good to go. Just want a simple style. I already have a... A, a material similar to this on my channel is the same person that brought it here so i've made something on that so a simple gown with gathers very beautiful please you can watch that on my channel too so i'm going to be coming back to show you how it looks So after turning it with everything and joining and putting the zip and closing it, have I closed it here? No. Joining the shoulders and all, this is how it looks. I'm just trying to remove some threads that were being funny. So if you don't know how to use a bias to turn your neckline, please, I have a, I have a tutorial on that on my channel that will guide you. On how to use a bias very well to turn your neckline neatly so i fixed the zipper i've turned the necklines i've joined the shoulders by half an inch and the next thing is i'm going to be taking the body measurement so that is closing it and then i'll be back to show you how it looks please at this point if you have not yet subscribed what are you waiting for please kindly subscribe thank you like and if possible, share this video. Thank you. So yeah, I've closed it and this is how it came out. So it's very beautiful and all. Yeah, so please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as you saw from the beginning of the video, I'd already fixed the sleeves. I used the plain red for this side and the striped one for the other side and it came out beautiful. Please, thank you and watch out for my next tutorial. Love you plenty, 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 plenty. <laughs>